up, guys? What's going on? What's going on? I got a hustler spirit, period. Check out my hat and the way that I wear it. Check out my swag. I walk like a ball player. No matter where you go, you are what you are, player. And you could try to change, but that's just the top layer. Man, who you was who you was before you got here. Only God can judge me. So I'm gone. Either love me or leave me alone. Shout out to Corsell. Smallhorn, rest in power, King. What's up, Kelly? What's going on? Rest in power to my brother Corsell. Uh, passed away. Peep how I wear it. That's right. Hustle of spirit. What's up? Royal Lapel is in the building. Deb, what's going on? Cliff Maloney all the way from Florida. We see you. What's going on? See you out there in Florida with the yachts, Cliff. Riding in uh, Florida. Shout out to you. We got my main man, Pining for Cedar, tonight on tonight's show. Welcome. What's up, Mills? Good to see you. Uh-oh. We got the one and only Anna in the building. Anna is in the building, probably from Vermont or is it Connecticut? I don't know. She's so fly. She's everywhere. What's up, Anna? Um, Kawan is in the building for up in the BX. What's going on? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I just want to um again shout out to my brother, rest in power to uh Corso Smallhorn. Um, my brother passed away, and um, dedicating all my shows to him. Um, but again, I'm Martin Smallhorn. Welcome to yes, your educational story tonight. We have a very special guest, uh, Mr. Anthony Serena, a Anthony Serena, aka uh, Pining for Cedar, who will be sharing his educational story. Uh, is that Angie Fung from South America in the building? What's up, South America? Guyana GT Massive, welcome. Um, but we got a great story, and it's it's really about hashtag hard work pays off, right? Because, you know, you see the shiny. Everyone sees the shiny. Marvin Gray to blouse and skirts all the way from Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa is in the house. Big up to you, Marvin. You know we have to get you up here. You know, rest in power, of course. So thank you, Cliff, Cuzzo. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so everyone sees the shiny, right? And they're like, okay, man, you know, you see it. You see people who are successful. And you're like, man, you only see that. But you don't see the hard work that goes into becoming that successful, whether it's a teacher, student, uh, businessman, or whatever it may be. People just see, you know, the shiny. Uh, tonight's guest is going to shine a little bit of light on that and also going to take us on on different paths that, you know, to make you realize that you don't always have to be in a box. There's so many other things out there that you could do to just um, to either A, have multiple streams of income or to just have multiple streams of happiness. All right. So without further ado, let me just uh, first say I'm Martin Smallhorn and um, this is Yes, Your Educational Story. And I started this because um, after 25 years of being education, in education, uh, five of which as a teacher, shout out to teachers uh, around the world, and 20 years as an administrator, I wanted to find out about um, the journeys and how people decided to like automatically, I'm turning on, uh, the light bulb is going on and I'm going to run with this and I'm going to go hard at it. So I wanted to I wanted to hear these stories, and so far we've heard some magnificent stories, whether it's from uh, Shamari Perkins overcoming um, obstacles of switching high schools, or um, you know uh, dealing with uh, new environments and not allowing that to to break her, but to o overcome them the challenges. Hey, me, what's going on? Titanium from Florida, what's going on? What's up? Uh, oh, oh, we got a cousin from Dilawankio. What's going on? Um, uh, we've heard some magnificent stories. Uh, Pop from the X, you know, walking miles in the snow. You know, his brother had just passed away. And, you know, he made that trek down to the, the, the producer studio where there was a big time person, a.k.a. Beyonce. And if he hadn't made that, that trek, he would have missed that opportunity. Um, to uh, Mr. Castro, uh, Laquan Castro overcoming, you know, the foster home system to now having his own business, you know, DJ authorized, right? Um, it's just so many stories and journeys and they're so exciting. And I just want you guys to get an insight into the multiple journeys and hopefully it impacts you as much as it's impacting me. Um, shout out to my producer, uh, Derek Smith, uh, AKA Merge. We have a couple of um, 
sponsors tonight. Let me get right to the sponsors, and then we're going to bring on uh, a magnificent guest, uh, Mr. Anthony Serini. What's up, Yusuf? What's going on? Lauren, what's up? Uh, tonight's sponsor, first sponsor is um, Miss Fanny Sweet Shop. Shout out to Miss Fanny Sweet Shop. Gave my mom a cake during the hard times that we were going through. My mom loved it. Thank you. That was a, um, a very sweet time, no pun intended, for us <laughs> during our um, tragedy. So Miss Fanny Sweet Shop is offering you uh, $5 off of your first order. If you mention the coupon code YES, mention the coupon code YES, MissFannySweetShop.com. It's going to be in the, live, in the line right here coming up. Um, and you can get $5 off your first order. The next uh, sponsor is Bloom Empowerment. Go to BloomEmpowerment.org and donate and help single mothers around the world. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, I am now going to welcome Mr. Anthony Serini uh, on to our show. Show. Let's see um, who we got here. Just give me one second. Okay. And Mr. Serini. James Rodriguez in the building. Shout out to James Rodriguez. James Rodriguez. Hey, Serini, you're like... Am I am I sideways? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're sideways. <laughs> I thought like, I was this guy laying down. Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be landscape. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What, what's what's up, up? CBDC? That, that just ruined it. I had I had the DJ light set up. I was like, Oh, oh you did? I see. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Listen, brother. It's it's definitely it's definitely good to see you. Um, before we begin, this is what we do first out the gate. State your zip code that you're repping, son. Uh, so I have a couple, but I was okay. born and raised in, uh, 10465. 10465, where is that? Is that, uh... Bronx, New York. Shout out to the X. Shout out to the X. All right, welcome. So, um, you said a couple, though. So what other zip codes do you want to rep? Uh, 06902, Connecticut, and then 05250, okay. uh, Vermont. Vermont, okay. All right, from the Bronx to Connecticut to Vermont. Yep. That's quite a that's quite a journey right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> City to <laughs> suburbs to mountain. <laughs> all right, all right. I love it. So uh let's start at the beginning with your educational journey. Um so uh I, I guess I think you know I could go back to elementary school and talk about things that happened in elementary school, but if I'm honest, I'm I'm not sure if those stories um, are going to be very different from other people's stories. You know, I, I yeah. went and I had challenges and, and I did all that, uh, you know, everything that somebody would, would experience in elementary school. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there was something that I, it was more of a life lesson that happened when I was in elementary school that always stands out to me when I think of that time period. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, my dad was super strict. First of all, I wouldn't be where I am without my parents. So, you know, I got I to gotta give a big shout out to them for immigrating from uh, Italy and coming here and okay. really having nothing and just, you know, raising a family and doing everything that they did. So, you know, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have anything. So Shout out to your dad. Shout out to your, your parents from immigrating. What year did they immigrate? Uh, uh, they came in the early 60s. Early 60s. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they, uh, they actually met in uh, high school, Roosevelt High School um, in the Fordham section. And they met because at the time there was no E and L program, um, mm. and so the teachers didn't know what to do with these two Italians who didn't speak English, and so they <laughs> really just sat them next to each other, and uh, you know from there, you know history was made. And, uh, so, All right, okay. And I got lucky in that respect, but um. And that and that was in the Bronx, right? Yeah, in the Bronx. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Shout out to uh, Antoinette and Madison and Ryan and Travis. The Lee family is in the house. Who we got here? Uh, Diesel D. What's going on, Hokey? Okay, so history is made in the Bronx. This is prior to Anthony Serini. Your parents immigrated from Italy. Shout out to immigrants around the world for coming here and um, taking advantage and taking um, and just just doing the best they can to um, to to build legacy. You know, and this Anthony Serini is, is a product of that. As am I, the great immigrant story. So, all right. So the parents meet. Yeah, so uh, I, I guess I'll go back to, you know, elementary school, and uh, that story ties in with my dad. Yeah. And um, I remember there was this one day, there was a snowstorm, and yeah. I did not want to go to school. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, please don't make me go to school. Come on, dad, don't make me go to school. <laughs> like, what are you going to make me? And my father was like, no, we got to go. You know, my father every day got up, went to work, go to school, go to school, you have to go to school. Yeah. He was very strict. Yeah. 
Um, and so I begged and I pleaded and the whole way, you know, we got in the car and he was driving me there and, and like he got in front of the school. I'm like, please don't take me, let's go. And so finally he was like, fine, you're not going to go to school. You're going to go to work. And I was like, okay, Whoa, how old are you? Take me to work. How old were you? I was probably like maybe seven years old. Okay. Seven. And, um, <laughs> yeah, seven years old. And I was like, okay, dad. I'll okay. Work. And, but little did I know what he meant. And, um, you know, so he drove me first over to my grandmother's house. And he made, he took the shovel out of the trunk of the car and he handed me the shovel and he made me shovel the entire, you know, uh, front of the house and the neighbor, yeah. right? And then after that, we went to his business and I had a shovel out all in front of his business. And then we went yeah. to, you know, like basically everybody around, family, whoever needed it, made me shovel everybody's, everybody's snow, you know, wanted yeah. to make sure that I understood that if I wasn't going to go to school, I was going to work. That's right. Um, and, you know, my grandparents had a cafe on the corner of 187th and Belmont. Okay. and uh the, the uh little italy section of the bronx mm -hmm. um and so my father i remember took me there and he told me i had to shovel the front and so i went outside with the shovel and yeah. i'm shoveling and there's a crosswalk and i'm trying to make sure i was all iced over and at seven years away. old at and seven I'm, years old seven years old yeah <laughs> and i'm like shoveling and shoveling yeah and um and i remember you know i finished and i was just like exhausted and i turn around there was a guy who was sitting inside the cafe and he was having an espresso yeah. And he's like watching me and, you know, like, uh, so I go to walk inside and he comes over and he, and he hands me a $10 bill. Wow. And he's like, don't let anybody take this away from you. You earned it. Mm. And this mm. like light bulb went off in my head. Yeah. And it was like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I can, I can, <laughs> you know, I can make what do you mean? hard work. Yes. Hold on. And so mm -hmm. after that, anytime it snowed, I would yeah. walk. I see horrible. Dude, you don't get paid when you work for family. It's family. <laughs> so, so, um, so work, that, work like, ethic oh, is established is, early. Yeah. So this is awesome. And so, you know, whenever it snowed, I was like, mom, can I go shoveling? Mom, can I go shoveling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so from, you know, an early age, I yeah. was, uh, I was always excited to work. Mm -hmm. And I was also really fortunate to have a lot of people around me who were just very skilled, you know, lots of yeah. skilled tradesmen. Uh, my dad was an accountant and he had a lot of friends. So if he couldn't fix it, he had a friend who could fix it and they would okay. come to the house and they would, you know, I, so mm -hmm. as a, at a young age, I was able to be around these guys who had um, tools that most people wouldn't have. Yeah. You know, so most people would have a, uh, a most people are, are accustomed to a hammer, a screwdriver, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. maybe a screw gun, things like that. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe a circular saw. But I was mm -hmm. hanging out around, you know, with guys who had all these, the, like a break to work on uh, metal things and you know uh you know table saws and 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 skill yeah. saws and all these 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 different types of tools and it, and it opened up my eyes to all this the, you know the possibilities if you had the right type of tool okay. um and so that kind of piqued my interest from a young age okay. uh just being a bit, able to be around these guys um so, so take us into like uh middle school and and, and high school what's that like okay. because this, what you're talking about right now it's funny how you know things that you you i guess you you interact with at an early age you don't know how they're going to play out later on in yeah. life and I don't want to spoil it for people how that plays out yet. So I want to go back to the young Serini, gotcha. who's like gotcha. this, this wonderful student. Um, <laughs> so I'll be honest, man, I hated middle school. I hated middle school. Um, it was like, it was the awkward stage. You know, I got all chubby. I needed glasses. You know, I was like walking around, trying to like come into myself. Acne started uh -huh. developing. Yeah. You know, Coke bottles and acne. It was like it was like one of those movies where you, yeah. know, you walk in and everybody's like, Oh, that's the that's the nerd, you know. Yeah. Um and uh you know, and I was in I was I was fortunate enough that I was in the higher level classes and so you know it made it even harder in that respect. Um but uh so What middle school did you go what, sorry, what middle school did you go to? I'm What's sorry, that? what middle school did you go to? IS one ninety two. Um Where, where's that? Randall Avenue in the Bronx. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, I want it, people to have it was rough. It was, it was tough. I mean, you yeah. know, it was, it was definitely a, a, a tough place to be at the time. And, yeah. um, and there was, there's this one story that stands out to me that really did change my life mm -hmm. from that time period. And it was, uh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm struggling to remember if it was eighth grade or if it was seventh grade. I believe it was, it was eighth grade. Mm -hmm. But I had this English teacher. And if, you, if you've ever seen The Matrix, um, and you know, I believe his name is Mr. Smith from The Matrix. Or yes. From, and he's like, Mr. Anderson, that guy. You know yes. what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I had this English teacher who was just like him. Um, yeah. He was really stern, strict. He had that voice. And um, he one day randomly, we're reading uh, Call of the Wild. Mm -hmm. And he randomly called on me to read. And 
I don't know what happened. I, I froze up. I locked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get the words out. And so everybody in the class is just looking at me. And it probably lasted maybe like, you know, three minutes, but it felt like yeah. 30 years. Um, and yeah. I skipped lines and I stammered, stammered, uh, stammered and I stuttered. And, and finally, you know, it's over. And I'm just like, oh, I get to go to lunch. And I get to yeah. lunch and everyone, everyone just ridiculed me at lunch. Mm -hmm. Even my friends, they were like, uh, 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 making fun yeah. of me. Yeah, oh, man. Um, and it was just terrible. And I remember I went home yeah. that night and I just like, the next day I didn't want to go to school. And I was just like, don't make me go. And yeah. I go back in and the next day, same thing. He really? calls on me again. Yeah. And I stutter and stammer and struggle. And I'm just like, I'm having the hardest time ever trying to get through this reading. Yeah. And it was just constantly over and over again. And, and, yeah. and this guy every day for the rest mm -hmm. of the school year called on me. Okay. And, you know, it got to the point where I was, I was so frustrated and nervous that I had to come up with a solution for this. I knew my parents weren't going to let me stay home. Yeah. I knew I had to go to school. Um, and so what I started doing was trying to figure out what, like, if I knew that we were going to read, let's say, chapter five the next day. Okay. I would go home and read it and read it and read it and read it again and read it again until the point where I almost had it memorized. And finally, it got to the point where I would go to school and, uh, you know, I was able to to read fluently because I had practiced it so much that it was almost as if I had memorized it. Wow. Um, but he still kept on calling on me anyway, even like yeah. to the very last day of the school year. It could have been like a test and he would have been like, Mr. Serini, can you please read the instructions? Yeah. <laughs> you know, wow. like, this so, guy was on me all year. But what, what he was doing was kind of uh, building Serini. Oh, man. It, it was, you know what? And the funny thing is I hated him. I, I'll be honest. I hated him. Yeah. Um, but now I can honestly say that I love him. I mean, had he not yeah. done that, I wouldn't have learned what I learned. And what, what it really forced me to realize at a young age was that if you really put the time in and you practice, um, and you study, you know, we always, we always say, you got to study, you got to study. Yeah. But, you know, we don't mm -hmm. really take it. I don't think we take it at the value that it's really meant to be. And, and hashtag, um, hashtag hard work pays off. Can I ask you how, how did that affect you, especially as a teacher later on? Um, that so experience. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, it, it, it was interesting because I realized the importance of it. I realize yeah. the importance of pushing someone and getting somebody out of their comfort zone, right? Yeah. If you allow people just to coast, mm -hmm. they're just going to continue to coast because they have no reason to do anything otherwise. But at the same time, if I'm honest, I mean, I don't ever want to make anybody feel yeah. the way that I felt. It mm -hmm. was, it was really rough. It was really rough. And, yes. uh, you know, it, 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 you know, that mixed in with other issues that I was having at the school at the time, you know, being bullied yeah. or whatever else, um, you know, it, it just, it made it really uncomfortable for me. Uh, at the time. So, yeah, at the time. And so I would never want to ever put anybody in that position okay. where they feel that uncomfortable. But yeah. in the same token, I do recognize that I need to challenge people. Yes. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I always try to do is, you know, push a little bit, you know, just, mm -hmm. just, just, just a little bit to get you over that little bit of a comfort zone um, and bring you to the next level. I do think that um, that teacher, he was uh, in his mind, he was using a great strategy because then and now, right? Education has changed tremendously, right? Um, because it, what he was really trying to do is, is, as you said, take you out of your comfort zone and build that confidence or make you go home and work harder, which is why, you know, as teachers, you know, we say, you know, study, study, study. We say it, but it doesn't really resonate until you actually go home and actually study and you show up for a test and you see, ah, aha, uh -huh. mm -hmm. that's what you meant by go home and study. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about high school. What high school did you attend? Uh, I attended Lehman High School in the Bronx. Shout which out I to believe Le you're very familiar with. Shout out to <laughs> shout out to Lehman High School. Uh, shout out to Lehman, <laughs> aka aka Lehman Campus now. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Um, very different time from when you went there, I'm sure. Yeah, it's it's definitely changed a lot over the years. When I was there, it was one big school. Uh, currently, I believe there's eight schools in the building. Yeah, um, something like that. Yeah, so, you know, it's changing. <laughs> so what, what was that like going to a 5,000 student uh, school? Um, it, was, it was interesting um, mm -hmm. because, I mean, you could literally uh, go to school with somebody and not know them. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, like the entire fourth floor was basically two departments. Okay. Uh, you know, like, and uh, so you would go and it, it was, it was, I, I loved it. I'll be honest, I loved it. And one of the reasons that I loved it was I got lucky. And um, my brother was a big drama buff when he was there. Okay. And uh, 
Shout out to Bronx Taxman. And yeah. uh, so he, uh, he was a big drama <laughs> boy. He was like, you got to get into the drama program. You got to yeah. get into the drama program. And, you know, I was still, you know, nervous with the whole yeah. reason thing and everything. Um, and he's like, you got to try it out. You got to try it out. And then my friends yeah. were pushing me and they were like, you know, you got to get into drama. You got to get into drama. And so I went with them to try out for a play. Yeah. And um, and I got one of the lead roles or one of the supporting leads, actually. And, uh, and it was like, huh? <laughs> not surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I have to, like, yeah. Yeah. you know, I have to read, but I have to memorize. I have to be on stage. Mm -hmm. I have to be in character. And so, you know, it pushed yeah. me and it changed me um, in a way that forced me to kind of come out of my – because I, I feel like, if I'm honest, I was always pretty personable with my friends and my family. Yeah. But, you know, when it came to being outside of that, I, I struggled a bit. Um, okay. But, you know – having the ability to go to a school that had so many programs, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and such a, a, a wide variety of, of staff who had so many different talents. Nice. Um, it really, it, it, it just, it opened a lot of doors for me. Um, awesome. and, and it inspired me to, to go into that field, you know, of, of education. Okay. Shout out to Lisa, Lisa, my sister, Lisa, one of the greatest guidance counselors on the planet. Shout out to her. So um, you decide to go into education uh, so, I mean, what, what was the what was the high school experience like? Was it uh, was it exciting? Was it like uh, ducking bullets? I mean, what, what was it like back then? I mean, it was different. It was definitely different than it is now. Um, yeah. You know, uh, but it wasn't. I mean, I loved it. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. I loved it. Yeah. I, I had great friends. There were great support systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had I had some amazing you know, teachers, and, you know, I was going to have problems, like every yeah. high school kid's going to have problems, you know, but there was never anything that made me say, oh, I don't want to go back to the okay. school, or I don't want to go to school today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you had an issue, you talked to your counselors, and they, yeah. they sat there and guided you through it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was fortunate at the time, I was in a program called College Prep. Okay. Um, and so we, you know, we were able to, to get some extra study skills and things like that, which definitely helped when I went to college as far as uh, writing papers and whatnot. Yeah, your high school sounded like it had a great leader. Yeah, it did. Uh, Mr. Robert Leader, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah shout, out, shout out to Mr. Yeah. Robert Leader, one of the last great principals on the planet. Um, and he definitely had an impact on you. And, and of course, myself about uh, work ethic. Can you definitely. share one of those stories? Uh, well, I don't want to jump ahead. Okay. So you go to college. What college do you go to? What college uh, Lehman at? College in the Bronx. Um, but if I'm honest, it, it wasn't my first choice. Um, not because there was anything wrong with it. Okay. All right. Now I'm just gonna be straight. Not because there was anything wrong with it. Because okay. you know, once again, I love college. I yes. Loved it. it was great. I mean, the campus mm -hmm. was beautiful. Yes. Um, I I had the you know I had the ability to study with amazing professors who taught all over the world. Um, and you know they're uh, multilingual. I mean, I had one professor mm -hmm. that spoke like twelve twelve languages and he would come in every yes. day and talk to us in a different language. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I loved it there. But I really wanted to be a chef. Um, oh. And, uh, you know, growing up, my family had that cafe and um, yeah. I used to watch my mom cook and my father was a great cook. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was, I, again, I was fortunate. I mean, I had, yeah. I had these amazing people in my life mm -hmm. that, that, you know, showed me so many different aspects of life. It wasn't just, um, you know, it, it wasn't like you just had somebody there for a singular support. I mean, yeah. they're just, you know, there, so many different people, even my neighbors. I mean, I, you know. I had, you know, an Irish mom and I had an Italian mom. You know, yeah. I got to eat Irish dinners and I got to eat Italian dinners. <laughs> you know, it was like, it, I, I was just fortunate. I got to be honest. Like, I really, I was, I was lucky. And, um, you know. That's beautiful, man. So, so you wanted to be a chef prior to going to college. Yeah. So I wanted to be a chef and I, uh, I spoke to my parents about it. Yeah. And once again, you know, my dad was very strict and he didn't believe yeah. in going away to school. Oh. And uh, and he believed that you know you should stay home with the family and you know you like should, most parents you know, be with the family, yeah like and most so, parents yeah and um and so it was hard because the school that I wanted to go to was in New Hyde, uh, New York, upstate, okay. upstate um, yeah. Culinary Institute of America, and it was also very expensive and and you know honestly we didn't have we didn't have money for that it was it was a lot of money and uh, City University fortunately mm -hmm. we were able to get uh, financial aid and I was able to go there and whatever you know I wasn't able to get through financial aid I was able to pay with time. And now, then, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your story, the story right there is like the story of so many people, but people saw the shiny that you, your parents had a restaurant, right? Your dad was, uh, was an accountant. They saw that. But the reality which, from what you're saying is that, you know, or I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm misconstruing. Like for me, I didn't want to go away to an expensive college because in my mind, my parents were poor. So I didn't want to add 
give an added burden. Was that similar for you? Because yeah, you know, I mean, you know, the the thing is, people people see you and you have a business, mm -hmm. and um, you know, a lot of times there's a misconception that if you have a business, it means that you have money. Yeah. Um, what it means is that you have a lot of responsibility. Yeah. What it means is that you have to work long hours. Talk it about it. Talk you're about constantly it. troubleshooting. Talk about um, it. What it means is that you have to manage situations when they arise. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for us, we were constantly trying to fix things. I mean, you know, if there was a problem, if, uh, you know, if there was a problem with a patron, you had to figure out how to resolve the situation in, in yeah. uh, you know, a, a positive manner. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, if there was a, a problem with uh, mechanical things, you know, like the mm -hmm. boiler stops working or whatever. I mean, yeah. I remember getting up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and uh, going with my father to try to fix something at two, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, you know, having to go and, and try to make things work. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, my dad was a hands on guy. I mean, if yeah. He, he could do it he would do it himself and that's why i started off the show with like people see the shiny but they don't see the hard work behind the scenes because they, they they walk into a restaurant oh you're rich you know but they don't understand like this the, the, you come here for like a half an hour we're living mm -hmm. this 24 hours every day you know and <laughs> yeah. uh, you know yeah. it, it's, it's very interesting so all right so you didn't follow the um the, the chef route but you're still a very good cook, by the way. I, I, Thank you. Thank you I can uh, <laughs> attest to that, right? <laughs> Thank you. I, I can throw down in the kitchen, yes. Yes. <laughs> we throw down a couple of times in, in some uh, strange places. But anyway, so, <laughs> so you graduated from college, from Lehman College, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what degree did you graduate with? And then what, where, where did you uh, uh, begin so working? I did, so I... I at first, I, I tried to go with what the family was doing. I tried to do the accounting. I wanted to okay. kind of, you know, my brother went down that route. My sisters went down that route. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to, you know, make the family proud and go into the family business. But I just couldn't do it. Okay. <laughs> I tried. Was, <laughs> the numbers, it was just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, just, it just wasn't happening for me. Okay. Um, and so I ended up graduating uh, with a degree in English. And the okay. reason, quite simply, was because I, and this is, you know, the crazy part, going back to my original story about struggling to read. Yeah. Um, by that point, I had gotten so um, accustomed to the, the practices and the routines of how to get through and how to navigate um, that type of a classroom that, um, you know, I, I was looking at my, my grades when I would get my grades in all my English classes, I was getting straight A's. Okay. Uh, you know, and I'm sitting there and, I'm like, well, hold on a second. Why am I trying to do all these other subjects if I have straight yeah. days? And at the same time, I started thinking about the teachers that I had in high school. Um, and they just, they seemed happy. You know, they, they, okay. they liked their job. They yeah. smiled. They, they made me feel good about myself. And I thought mm -hmm. about it and I was like, why not, why not go into a profession where I could do the same thing and I could give back the way they gave back to me? Okay. Um, you know, if this is something that there's a chance that I'm going to be good at mm -hmm. and I can make a difference with it, why not? You know? Um, okay. And so that was, that was a big part of it. All right. Shout out to uh, maybe one of your colleagues. You might know him, Anthony Antonio Blandaris, a.k.a. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ste Stephen Bland. Nice. Shout out to Badman in the house, Mr. J.B. Smells Good. What's up, Jake? Right. Uh, we have a colorist on the line, uh, Lisa. What's up, Lisa? The master colorist. Um, all right, so where did you begin your career, Anthony, as a teacher? Uh, so I got really fortunate. Um, I was uh, – so before – uh, I had, before I could get my license as a teacher, um, I had to shadow. I had to basically go in and do observations. And so, of course, you know, the first place that I wanted to go to was the school that I went to. Okay. And I, um, and so I went in and Mr. Leader saw me and he remembered me. He recognized wow. me right away. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Mr. Serini! You know, he had remembered me from being in the plays because when I was yeah. in school, I was a big part of the drama department. Mm -hmm. And um, and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to become a teacher. And he goes, amazing, that's great, wonderful, you know, awesome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he said, we're going we're gonna to set you up. You know, don't worry about it. So he sent me up to the English department. Yeah. And uh, I met with Karen Andronico, and she paired me up with Mindy LaCicero. And I got to shout out Mindy LaCicero, who, you know, just, just was so, so gracious to me. I mean, I, I can't, you know, explain how grateful I am for uh, yeah. just, you know, showing me the way. Shout out to the GOAT, Mindy LaCicero. Yes, absolutely. AKA, you know, my closer. <laughs> Shout out to the GOAT. Okay. All right. Yes. And Doctor and to Dr. Karen Andronico, another GOAT out there, the greatest of all time out there. Shout out to absolutely. these wonderful individuals. And um mm -hmm. and so, you know, I, I shadowed for a while and then it's yeah. uh just quickly I, I guess I could I could tell that story. So it was funny. Um mm -hmm. so uh Mindy said to me one day, How do you know you want to be a teacher? And I said, I just I think it's something I could do. 
And she yeah. says, have you ever taught a class? And I said, no. So she said, okay, mm -hmm. come in tomorrow with a lesson. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Okay. <laughs> so I came in the next day to teach a yeah. lesson. And I was prepared with a Petrarchan sonnet. Um, okay. Who told us to hunt? I know where is in hind. Uh, mm -hmm. Written by uh, um, uh, Sir Thomas Wyatt, right? Going back to the, you know, uh, 1500s, 1400, 1500 range. Okay. And I show her the lesson and she's just looking at me like I'm crazy. And she's like, you're going to teach this? Like, how are you going to get these kids to get into this? And I went up and I um, played I'll Be Missing You um, by, uh, I don't know what he's called now, but at the time it was Puff Daddy, I believe. Okay. P. And, Diddy, um, P, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Diddy. P. Diddy, Puff Daddy. And, um, <laughs> sorry, I don't know. The names were always changing. So I played that and then I um, played the original by uh, Sting. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, and the police. And yeah. I went into an explanation about, um, you know, remixes yeah, and how, um, you know, just like musicians are always borrowing from each other, mm -hmm. um, you know, poets are borrowing from each other. Yes. And then what I did was I introduced the poem and I talked mm -hmm. about how it was a borrowed poem from uh, Francesco Petrarca and basically just kind of brought the ideas together. And at the end of the lesson, she said, do it again. And <laughs> she ran and she got Karen Andronico. Karen came, observed me. And um, I did it again, and then I did it again. Yeah. And uh, the next day, you know, Mr. Leader uh, gave me some papers, sent me down to um, mm -hmm. uh, One Fordham Plaza. Yeah. And I had to get fingerprinted and all the uh, that stuff. And, you mm -hmm. know, the rest is kind of history. I got to go back to the school, hired me as a, a, a permanent sub, and, you know, been there ever since. And Yeah, and, and the, the rest is history. But this, this is the difference between uh, good teachers and great teachers. Right. And teachers that, you know, that you always remember, like you always remember that teacher that, you know, forced you to read every day. I'm sure there are so many students around the world now that remember Anthony Serini and, and the effect that you bring to the classroom, because you think outside the box. It's not just about going in there and uh, anyone, anyone. And no. <laughs> no, you bring it, you bring it. And, you know, students are not going to stay awake if the story is boring. They stay awake and they remember you when you when the story is exciting. So um, I thank you for that. Um, and do and you're still doing it, right? How many years do you have in now? Uh, going into eighteen, I believe. Eighteen years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is definitely a journey. So is there anything um, else that is going on in your life right now? Um, so you know, I'm a, I'm a believer that um, that you shouldn't be defined by one thing. Uh, and that you should be able to expand yourself and, and uh, you know, you shouldn't, uh, you should be able to, to do whatever it is that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things that that's always given me peace was uh, woodworking. And I, uh, I always did it. I, I always worked on the side with things. I was always repairing things, but I never really, you know, I didn't, I didn't kind of, I hate to use this expression, but I didn't show it off. You know, I didn't have an Instagram. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any of that stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. in all honesty, people were always asking me, you know, like, you know, can you, can you send me pictures of that thing that you made? Can you show yeah. me? I want to show my friend, you know, like, can you? And, and so in all honesty, I started an Instagram at the request of two of my colleagues, <laughs> you know, um, Rachel Panny and Vera Bonnie, yeah. who, who were like, who were like, we want to see pictures of you working on your house. We want to see pictures of stuff like this. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, and so I was like, all right, fine. So I, I started an Instagram and I just started posting the, the work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I, I had done side jobs and things like that on the side. Okay. But, you know, again, I was just, I, I've always been fortunate that I've had, I've always had a great mentor. Right now, my uncle Chris is, he's amazing. I mean, okay. the guy is, he's, he's my guru. He's, there's yeah. nothing the guy doesn't know how to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was just about to ask you, the Royal Lapel uh, asked uh, in, the, in, the, in the gram here, what is your IG so people can follow? That uh, you start pining, pining for cedar. My producer Derek is going to put it in the link there. Pining for cedar, and um, of course, you know, check out the work, man. Check out the work. It's really talented work. Um, I, you know, just happen to might have <laughs> that um, might have been made for me. You know, a personal piece, a one of a kind. Anthony Serini, you know, chalice. Your birthday chalice, okay. man. <laughs> this is this was given to me on my birthday. This is just you know, it's just one of the things you know. I just like to show it off every now and then. And before, you know, before you become really famous, I can say I have a one of a kind, <laughs> Anthony Serini. 
you know, because you never know where life is going to take us, right? You know, you started off with this journey of, of education, but now you're in a whole nother, um, a whole nother lane uh, of woodwork, right? Not carpentry. Yeah. It's not carpentry, right? It's woodwork. So, so carpentry, te I mean, technically, I, I do work with carpentry or, or I do carpentry, but carpentry yeah. people tend to define more along the lines of framing. Yes. Um, so you think just construction building, but I would like to actually work with different aspects of woodworking. Um, yes. So I like to, I, so that the, the chalice that I made you, as you call yeah. it. Yeah, which is drinkable, um, by the uh, way. I use the which, wood lathe. Yes, which is drinkable. Someone just asks, is it yes. drinkable? Yes. It's quite drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I use the wood lathe to make that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like there's different types of woodworking. I like to work with chisels. I like to work uh -huh. with, uh, by hand. You know, and I'll make all different types of things. I've made everything from a table to a lamp to a bed to a wall unit to uh, <laughs> benches. Um, you know, uh, I don't know the sheds. I, yeah. You know, like uh, you know a greenhouse. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's so many different types of things. And and in all honesty, if I don't know how to make something, I'll I'll reach out to somebody who I know who does and ask. Yeah. Um. I'll I'll research it, get the the, the blueprints. And the truth is, you know, you you try, and if you make a mistake. Yeah. You just start over again. It's not that big of a deal. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the interesting thing is I was always hesitant to, to show off my work because I didn't feel that, you know, it was, it was uh, good enough. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and everybody else has convinced me otherwise. And, and you know, I, I came to realize and understand that, you know, like um, you, can, you can develop skills and you can grow um, through the learning process, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with working with other people, working with other tradesmen, um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm very inquisitive. If somebody is doing something, you know, if I can't do something and I hire somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, I ask them, how did you do that? What did you do? Can you show me? Um, yeah. you know, I might be a little annoying at times, you know, I'm yeah. sure, but you know, the, the truth is I want to learn and I want to know how to do these things. Um, and I've been, I've been able to, uh, increase my, you know, my portfolio of yeah. skills, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. uh, a lot. And, um, you know, it saved me a lot of money over the years. Um, one of the things that got me into it really uh, was that I couldn't afford to buy furniture. Yeah. Uh, when I moved out and I got my own place, mm -hmm. I went to go buy a bed and it was the cheapest, you know, wood frame bed I could buy. It was $1,200 um, for the, I wanted a platform bed. Yeah. And I just thought that was crazy. And so I went to Home Depot and I bought uh, a chop saw mm -hmm. and a screw gun and the wood and all the materials and everything all together cost me about $250. And I built a beautiful wood platform wow. bed. Wow. And then after I did that, I was like, well, I need shelves. Wow. And so I, you know, wow. my nephew shot me out over there. <laughs> and somebody said, he made me, he made me my first desk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, like it, truth be told, like if I can make it, I'm not buying it. And I just, yeah. I refuse to buy it. And in my house, um, you know, the beds were made, you know, we made the beds, um, shelving cabinets. I mean, anything, anything that, you know, specifically, I mean, with wood, definitely, yeah. you know, if I can make it, I'm making it. And the yeah. other, the other aspect I love doing is uh, masonry. Okay. So I love reclaiming stone and building with stone as well. Fire pits, uh, retaining walls, all those types of things. Um, it's just, it's a passion, and and it, yeah. it helps me de-stress. Uh, and you know, I've been I've been fortunate enough that people who have seen my work have appreciated it so much that they, yeah. you know, asked me to do things for them, mm -hmm. and I love it. I love, that's, that's I love, a, you know, I it, love it. You know, you are, you are, this is so refreshing because it's really a testament um, that, you know, it's, it's never over. You know, people put themselves mentally in a box, you know, and say that, you know, this is, this is my job. I wake up every day, nine to five, and they do it over and over and over again. They think there's nothing else they can do. There's always something else out there. You know, what's that quote, uh, that quote by Carl Barth? Though no one can go back and make a brand new start. Anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Tomorrow is always a new day. You know, you can wake up tomorrow and uh, decide, I'm, I wanna be a hiker. I wanna run a marathon. I wanna, I wanna be a chef. You know, Absolutely. You, you, you cannot be afraid to take these leap of uncertainties, you know, because this life of ours is not a dress rehearsal. Absolutely. You know? So you want to, to enjoy every moment to the, to the best of your ability. And you know what, most importantly, you deserve to be happy. You deserve yeah. to be happy. And when I see, uh, when I look at your Instagram and anybody who goes to uh, Pining for Cedar, one thing that resonates with me in every um, picture that I see is the definition of happiness. 
and yeah. it really leaps off leaps off, off the off the um off the Instagram pictures. You can see that, you know. The, the one thing that you don't see is all the sweating and the sand. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll no, tell you right so now, that's... woodworking is like is like ten percent building, ninety yeah. percent sanding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it kills me. But oh, you love it. You oh, love man. it. Unbelievable. I spent so much time. Like if I were to actually, if I did a time lapse video, you would see the sun going up and coming back down and going back up and coming back down. And I'm still sitting there with the power sander. You know, I'm sure we'll get to that one day. Um, That's the killer of it. So Anthony, um, yeah, I was going to say, is there, is there anyone you'd like to shout out at this time? Um, well, you know, I, I got to say, uh, I wouldn't have learned a lot of the skills that I learned without um, certain key people in my life. So, you know, I mentioned my dad, um, my mom and my parents, you know, my siblings were always really, you know, a great support system for me. Um, I was the, you know, annoying younger brother, you know, yeah. I'm, there's a big age difference between us. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful for everything that they ever did for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then uh, as, as far as the woodworking stuff, I mean, there's so many people, I wouldn't even know where to start because I've just been so fortunate to be around so many tradesmen. But right now in my life, Uncle Chris is just, you know, he's, he's my guru. Okay. Um, you know, uh, growing up, I had uh, Patty Enright, who okay. was, uh, you know, he was just, he'd take me with him on side jobs, and I learned mm -hmm. so many different things from him. Yeah. So super lucky for that. My brother-in-law, Paul, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing. We would go and we would do side jobs. You know, we would repair whatever needed to be repaired in somebody's yeah. house. You know, you get a side job, I'd go, and, you know, we would get it done. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, obviously, there's the... You know, there's the important people, my wife, Anna, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, Shout out to Anna. Yeah. Let's and, pause, uh, on, you know, pause family, on that for a second. Shout out to Anna. You know, family, friends, coworkers, everybody. Yeah. I mean, I'm just really grateful. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really grateful that I've been, uh, I've been surrounded by amazing people, you know? And, yeah. and the truth is, like, we just, and I'm guilty of this, too. So I'm not saying that I never get negative, okay? I know, and I know anybody in this room that knows me knows that I can be like, ugh. <laughs> but the truth is you know you just got to kind of push through it and um yeah. and just re remember that you know there is as they say a light at the end of the tunnel and yeah. um you know when things don't necessarily go in the right direction whether it's you know at work at home whatever you know you just push through and if you fall you get back up you know you yeah. fall you get back up um and i think one of the things that a lot of people struggle with today specifically is people say no too much yeah. um and people need to start saying yes Right. And what I mean by that is yes. stop saying no to opportunities. Mm. Right. Every opportunity that has come my way that I've said yes to has yeah. taught me a lesson. You know, it's taught me a lesson. Maybe maybe it wasn't a great lesson every time, but it's taught me something. Yeah. And from that lesson, I've become a different person and I've advanced myself. Right. Yeah. I've advanced my career, I've advanced who I am as a person. And I've learned a new skill. I've learned a new experience. Right. So stop saying no. Start saying yes. Mm. And expand your horizons right and and you can you can be more than one thing right yeah. regardless of what you do during the day it doesn't mean you have to do that at night that's right, right. Mm -hmm. talk about it brother thank you thank you for sharing that you shared some beautiful words of wisdom right there so thank you um thank you thank you thank you and, and you know of course you know i the one person that i, I didn't mention that i gotta mention of course mm -hmm. is uh mr martin Smartin or martin uh -huh. smallhorn over here right of course, of course, the the, uh, the educational guru, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, my brother. You know, and you know, you know, people. You know, when, when people give me compliments like that, I, I I always say I'm only as good or great as the people I surround myself with. You know, and uh, you and I've you know I've had the honor of working with you for I don't know maybe ten over ten years easily. Yeah. Right, and. Um, our partnership, I call um, Mr. Sweeney actually my um, my PIF, which is my partner in fun, because this education thing that we do for us is fun, you know, it's fun first and can keep it exciting, and everything else uh, falls into line with that, you know. So the great things that we do in this life is about the people that's in the room with you, which leads me to tonight's quote: "Surround yourself with smart, dedicated people to build something." isn't a one-man show, right? It isn't a one-man show. So, Mr. Serini, um, thank you so much, Anthony, for coming on. Shout out to your parents and the great job that they did and to all the immigrant stories, you know, um, who've come to this country and try to build a legacy. 
and uh, work hard to attain things and just change change the narrative, you know. Um, yeah. Thank you. And shout out to the Bronx tax man, of course. <laughs> Got to get him on your show. <laughs> <laughs> He's next. He's next for sure. Shout out, to, <laughs> shout out to the Bronx tax man. Shout out to educators. Shout out to great, phenomenal teachers around the world that keep it exciting, you know. And as usual, at this time, oh, I do want to shout out my son. Miles, who's back from college, his first, just completed his first year of college. Shout happy out belated to birthday, Miles. Happy, yeah, happy birthday. Happy 19th birthday. Wow, 19. Geez. Wow, getting up there. So shout out to him. And um, guys, once again, everyone has a story to tell. But what's your educational story? I have two more sponsors before we close out. Nicolette Emerson, Massage Therapy. If you want to get 10% off your first massage, just enter code YES20 at NicoletteEmerson.com. Uh, Florida rum cake in the building. If you want a Florida rum cake, yes, it's from Florida. Florida rum cake.com, <laughs> Florida rum cake.com, $5 off your first purchase. And one last sponsor, Dr. Tedda, um, Dr. Hassan Tedda presents The Art of Human Care for COVID 19. It's a great read. Go to drtedda.com, pick up the latest in the series of the art of human care. This one is about COVID-19. Um, please uh, log on. Everything is in the chat right here. And of course, if you don't know and you want to find out more about woodwork or if you want to, um, if you want a certain piece done just for you, a one of a kind piece, go to Pining Cedar and DM Mr. Anthony Serena, Serini, or you could follow him or DM me and I will get you to him if you, if you have an issue getting through, okay? Anthony. Peace, shout out to you, and thank you so much for coming on and sharing your educational story. Peace. Take care.